I think I've just been sent out the ultimate keyboard for any girl gamer. Well, really anyone. So let's jump in to the Kizzy K68 Pro mechanical keyboard. And at the minute, it's only coming in at around $70 because it's on sale, but normal price is around 100. So let's see if this thing is actually worth it. So starting off with the unboxing, the box is actually really well made and I love the design on the top here. As soon as you open this up, you are greeted with a K68 Pro manual guide and just tells you a little bit about the board and the features that it can do. And then just under that is the keyboard itself and they actually give you a dust cover, which not a lot of budget keyboards do nowadays. They are then greeted with the keyboard, which we'll put to one side for now. So in the box, you get four extra switches, which obviously shows this board is hot swappable. And these switches are the Moment Linear Switch, which are a beautiful purple and cream colorway. Then they also supply you with a USB-C to USB-C cable, which also has the adapter to USB-A, which is really nice to have. And then obviously your switch and keycap puller with the nice Kizzy logo on the front there. And that is everything you get in the box. But now let's actually look at the keyboard itself. And as you can see, this is in a beautiful colorway with this pinks, these dark purples, with the green font on the top here, just looking absolutely stunning. And on the back is where you find your USB dongle, which is actually magnetically held in, so you know you're not gonna lose it. And you've got this nice little metal plaque on the back here just telling you some specs, which no one really looks into because it's all about the voltage and things like that. So before we move into the build quality and the overall play test of this keyboard and all the sound tests, which everyone loves, let's go over some of the specs that we can find within this board. So with the colors, they were actually inspired by Demon Slayer and Blue Archive, which are animes if you did not know. The main colors of the keyboards are based on blue, pinks, and purples. I've got a knob on the top right which can easily be moved to different mode connectivities. So unfortunately that knob does not control the volume or any other thing apart from connectivity options. And this is also a gasket mounted keyboard with its five layers going from poron cotton, IXPE pad, PET pad, sound absorbent in cotton and a silicone pad which then obviously allows it to have less movement when being pressed and makes the sound much more purer when typing. So with the knob on the top being for connectivity this actually allows you to connect from five different positions. The first one being closed is when you've got it plugged in through the wire. The second one is 2.4 gigs. The third one is connect through Bluetooth and then obviously four and five from Bluetooth one, two and three. And another cool thing about this keyboard is when it's plugged in through wire, because it only works when it's wired, you actually get an extra USB-C hub, which a lot of keyboards do not do. So if you wanted your mouse to be plugged into your keyboard, you could do that. And as I mentioned before, this is hot swappable and it is also self-facing RGB to be compatible with side printed keys. The keycaps themselves are MDA PBT keycaps. So that means they are very durable. Now the battery that is supplied is a 2000 milliamp battery. It's not one of the biggest that I've seen, but it's still good enough. This can give you apparently 40 days without any lights on and that's a rough six hours per day. So you'd easily be able to play a full day on this board without any issues. But for me, I personally like to be wired just so I know I've got the best connectivity. One thing I love about keyboards like this is the adjustable feet. And this one has two stage feet, so you get a bit more variety of how you want your typing angle or even gaming angle. Now there is a Kizzy driver you can download to use the software. I'm not going to personally because I find that it's just easier to do it on the keyboard unless it is a magnetic switch where you have to change activation points. Software to me is irrelevant, so I won't be going into that today. Now they do supply two switches when you get this board. You can either have the reappear switch or you can have the meeting switch. The reappear switch is more for your gaming and then the meeting is more for the office. So type experience. But anyway, that's all the specs that I've got for this board. Let's move over to the build quality and actually have a more hands-on look at this board. Okay, so build quality so far, it does feel lightweight and it does feel a bit plasticky, but that's going to be expected when you've got a plastic board. It doesn't have any flex, so that's a good sign. When you have a keyboard that you can bend, that's a no-go straight away. As I mentioned, you've got the two USB-Cs at the back, one being a docking station, if you will, which is huge for a keyboard to actually have. Because you're gonna be using a USB up, it's nice to have a little extra one there if you wanna charge your phone, or if you have an external numpad, you can just wire it directly into the board. So that right there is a huge win on that part. Keycap colors look absolutely incredible. I love this colorway of the bright pinks, the purples, and then the dark sort of maroon. The board doesn't scream kizzy, you know, it's not got their logo all over. There is literally a little logo on the space bar. That is it. The RGB is super bright and it really does contrast the board very nicely. For a board like this, I, I didn't expect the RGB to look so good. You can change the RGB and you can have static lighting as well if you are like me and you don't really go for the RGB, you like it one color, you can do that. But anyway, let's jump into some games. For me, the build quality is good. The knob feels a little bit cheaper than the whole board itself because it's made out of this really cheap, tacky plastic. But the board itself, 
seems durable enough to me. I can't find a fault for the plastic. It's not got any, you know, it doesn't creak when you squeeze it. It doesn't bend at all. It doesn't look high quality, but it feels high quality if that makes sense. But anyway, I'm gonna jump in some games, test this out really, and then we'll come back and give my overall opinions and my thoughts. So far, I'm loving the colorway. And then we'll get onto the sound test and you can judge for yourself in the comments below whether this would be a keyboard that you'd look at picking up. Okay, so we're all plugged in, we're all ready to go. I can see the caps lock gives me a nice little indication that it's on and off. Because normally the RGB underneath the caps lock will change color. I'm glad they added that light there. One thing that bugs me with a keyboard is when you don't know if caps lock's on or off, but we're good. Obviously, FM button there will allow you to use F1 to F12s like every other standard keyboard, but now let's go into a game and see how this thing performs. I don't normally do this within my videos because normally I've had the board for around a week or so. I can actually test it and let everyone know my thoughts and opinions and pros and cons. Because I haven't actually had this board for more than like a couple of days, I haven't had a chance to actually test it. So that's what we're doing now. Jumping in the game, seeing how it feels, how the buttons feel. I like the fact it is a small board because it gives me that chance to turn it and you know, do all the good stuff. So we're jumping in Valorant. Just gonna go into a little death match here. I like how light it is. Sometimes a lot of people like their heavier keyboards. I like the lightness of this just because it's easier to move when you wanna play a game. You can just quick, you know, flick it, do a bit of typing, flick it back and you're off. That's personal preference, I guess. Oh, they gave me rays. Of course they did. They know I like rays. Hello, here we go. So far, the switches are very uh, responsive. There's not anything that I'm finding, you know, that... They are very responsive. When we do the sound test, you'll understand the sound is such a... I wouldn't say thocky, or I wouldn't say creamy. It, it gives premium. Okay, I'm gonna get through this round. We'll go back to my overall thoughts and opinions of this board. Oi! So after playing a couple of games using this board, I'm actually surprised at how well it feels in the hand. It, it just feels like the buttons are so responsive. Even though I've been using magnetic switch keys, which are like accuration points 0.01, so it's just super rapid trigger. This feels a lot more responsive than what I actually expected. I think because there's not a lot of pink keyboard choices out there for girls that have like the big pink gamer room, this is definitely a recommendation from me. If you are looking into getting a pink keyboard, this is probably one to go for. This is a great starter board. It's it's a pre-build, it's already made, you haven't got to go messing around. But if you wanted to, you could still upgrade it and customize it with hot swappable keys and also just changing the Pyron foam and all of that stuff inside. But I haven't found anything wrong with the board. There's been no latency issues, there's been no disconnections, which is a huge thing for me. If it disconnects in game, you guys know I hate it. You need a keyboard that's reliable and loyal, and that's what this is. So if you want to check this out, there will be a link in my bio or on the description of this video, because again, this is going to YouTube and also my tech talk, which I appreciate you guys sitting here and watching this whole video. Because I know you guys on TikTok like your short form, but I'm getting some really good feedback on the long form as well, so I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And obviously, if you enjoy this content as well, leave a like, hit the follow button or subscribe, leave a comment about your thoughts on this keyboard, or if you have any questions actually about this board, then I can uh, go and deep dive into it a bit more for you. But for such a short amount of time playing with this board, there's nothing that I have found that I can actually fault it. Maybe just the fact that it doesn't feel as high quality as what most boards out there do now with the aluminium cases and things like that. But for me, it feels premium enough for the price point it is at. So a massive thank you to Kizzy for sending this out. They haven't told me anything to say about this board. They've just let me sort of have free reign, which I really appreciate. A company that allows you to say what you want is a company that I enjoy making review videos for because then it also helps people out there like you if you're looking into getting a keyboard at what sort of budget price you're looking for and what sort of keyboard you're looking into, then I can help at least give some sort of input from someone that's actually used it. But at the end of this video, there will be a sound clip, so make sure you stick around for that if you wanna hear the crispiness of this board. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, capture, create, captivate, and I'll see you all in the next video.